Okay, boys and girls, we're doing the trail thing again. Okay, uh, bear spray, check. Camera, check. GoPro, check. So I got up at sunrise, which was like 4.40, no, actually it was 5, but I got up at, I got up at, uh, let's check this out. I see, I see some rabbits. Should probably just leave this in the truck. Because you never know. Like that, that part where I want to go, it's a marsh. Marsh trail. Well, this whole thing. It's a set of trails, and in winter people come here to uh, to uh, ski. Yeah, let's do like this. I'm in shutter priority mode. Battery is good. Regina Ski Club. So this is called White Butt Trails or White Butte Trails, depending how they pronounce it. Uh, no fires, littering is an offense, no motor vehicles, horses allowed. Okay, yeah, so you see this? And I'm wearing my Canadian tire boots because I knew there would be, the grass will be. So I'm here and I don't want to go through here. That's the I see, wow, how much they have here. So how many trails? So marsh is uh, very flat. You see, novice, novice level. But Butte Trail, let's call it Butte, like the town in Montana. Butte is this uh, blue one. It says, no, this one probably, it's very hilly. It says intermediate level. Yeah, but this one, that's what I want to do, because there's no, I don't want to go in the woods, like there's no wildlife there, like if they'd be hiding behind the trees, I need open space. So I want to go here because I checked pictures on this marsh, uh, so it's 1.6 kilometers, basically exactly one mile, and you just stay to the right, actually it says here it's this way, okay. North Willow. North Willow. What's the name of that one? I mean number two. One and two. One. Okay, so one goes this way, two, but then this way they point this way. I don't know. I go. I'll go towards I don't know where I'll go. So one, see? Probably this way. Yeah, I'm trying to stay away from trees because I've been to places like this. Oh, North Willow Trail. Ah, that's what it is. Marsh Trail. Perfect. So I'll take this one and then loop back like this. North Willow Trail. Yeah, you see, this is what I want. I want something like this open space so I can catch a deer or. I, I'm not sure 
I don't think there's uh, big birds in here because there's no water. Usually those guys like eagles and osprey they like when there's a lake nearby. And then they would sit somewhere in a tree looking at their reflection in the water. <laughs> I think that's the actual trail, like the actual park. No, actually, wait, that's another one that goes. But that's where they do all the skiing over there. So this is the perfect time of day. The sun is just rising. And I sprayed myself with a mosquito spray. And I'm wearing my winter hat, believe it or not. You know, with the, the one with the ear flaps. Because it, now it covers the back of my head and the sides. Because yeah, these areas like this can have a lot of mosquitoes, but actually there's no water. When I went on that, uh, remember last time I did something like this? I went on that tour around the lake in Denver. Man, the mosquitoes are like clouds. And I didn't, I didn't have any spray. So, but as soon as you step away from the water, they disappear. They were only right next to the water. There were some walkways over there, some uh, wooden uh, kind of like plank walkway. And uh, that's where all these mosquitoes were just staying in the air in one spot. And you see, that's, what, that's what's cool about my job as a trucker. I, I have to see places that I probably would never have seen otherwise, because this is Saskatchewan. This is 1600 miles away from Cambridge, Ontario. And I parked at the truck stop and then I was looking at the Google Maps trying to see if there's any parks. You know, usually it's a big green mass on Google Maps. And I see one five minutes away from the truck stop. And I zoom in and it says trails. And that's how I found this place. And they show you where you can park. All right, where's all the deer? But as I was driving, as I was leaving the truck stop and I stopped at the first intersection, I saw a fox in the grass like 10 meters away, literally. But as soon as I, she heard my truck, because diesel engine pretty loud. She started running away. And I didn't have time to grab my camera. So we are just east of Regina, Saskatchewan. Probably some 20 kilometers. Twenty kilometers east. So here's my beauty. Nikon D850 with a battery grip and a 500 millimeter. F5.6. I'm very happy of this combo. Super nice. And the best part is that because of the high resolution of Nikon D850, 
it still works when you switch to crop sensor mode and that's what I have here so this camera is pretty much like two in one if the light is good and you're close to something you want to photograph of course I use the full frame mode I like the entire the entire 47 megapixels okay let's see who is this guy oh got it I forget their name but they're very very pretty Oh, this one was against the the sun is over there so the the eyes the, it's hard to get the eyes in focus because there's a backlight you know in wildlife photography the first thing you do you always need more light so you always try to shoot away from the sun like that way because the sun is over there so if I can see like a bird sitting somewhere here with the sun full in its face or you know or a deer it doesn't matter like in the grass but as long as the animal is facing the sun that's the perfect spot and so yeah that's what you get when you're trucking like some people call this you are a commercial tourist because people pay you to travel <laughs> and because I'm my own boss if I want I can take as much time off as I need I decide where where I go but right now I really want to get back to Ontario because of my uh, shiny new black Dino Buffetti accordion that's waiting for me there and I have money to pay for it because I just moved this big machine from uh, Ontario to Regina So thank you for following me on this little adventure. You can click off, of course, anytime you want. But look at this, like, you know, you're sitting, you're sitting or lying on a sofa, munching on a huge sandwich with cheese, you know, like 2000 calories. And uh, a sandwich in one, in one hand, yeah high calorie beer in the other hand and you're watching this and you feel healthy you know so that's what I'm doing these videos because I think it can be relaxing for people that watch this Like, when in a million years would you come to Regina, Saskatchewan? Especially if you live in the States. <laughs> and here you are, looking through the lens of Captain Sergei, 
So I'm doing all the hard work, so you guys relax. Uh, keep a good firm grip on that sandwich. By the way, I'm proud to say that I'm trying to give up all alcohol. And today you know, I'm trying to limit coffee, just trying to be healthy. And I feel so much better. I sleep way better. I don't wake up in the middle of the night. So basically trying to lead healthy lifestyle. All right, now what do we do? Okay, that's West Aspen. I definitely don't want to go there. West Aspen, yeah, that goes south. No, that goes into the woods. Like if I go this way, this is the one that's 1.6 clicks. It brings me right back to my truck. I think that's all that I'm gonna do. Otherwise the video will be too long. And like I said, I really don't want to go into the... Like this is pretty much useless, you know, for photography unless there's a eagle sitting on top of a tree. Because it's very hard for the camera to focus. Uh, you know, let's say there's a deer right like standing right there like I cannot photograph it unless I really take my time and you know, zoom do a single dot focus you know but even then there'll be a bunch of branches in the way and you can never get a shot picture trust me I'm a semi-professional in this actually seriously I've been thinking about this and it makes me so happy when somebody buys my picture, you know, like the pictures that I have on my pixels.com website and on my Elami website. Who are you? like that's perfect because this thing is facing the sun wow nice super sharp <laughs> and one thing with this camera I found is that it's super difficult at least for me to get sharp pictures of animals when I'm using full frame mode you know like the entire 46 megapixels because then the camera just magnifies every imperfection but as soon as I switch to crop sensor mode uh, there's much less megapixels so the camera is not as picky you know and that's what I use oh and the best part is that this is a 500 millimeter lens what? <laughs> I didn't even touch it it's a 500 millimeter lens when I switch to crop mode, it becomes 750 millimeter lens. You know? And with these uh, small birds, even that's not enough. Like for that pig, for that bird that was on a tree, you need like 1000 mil. Easy. Because it's a tiny part of the frame that the bird is occupying, so I still will have to crop it. But mostly what I'm doing this for is. I started a Instagram channel yeah, See that position is perfect because the bird is facing the sun so I get lucky with our I think I got the focus right on the eye So I started an Instagram channel called Sergey Actually I had it before but I just now re restarted it it's called Sergei Drachev Photo. All one word. And that one is just dedicated to wildlife 
and landscape photography so I only have like six pictures in there now so I wanted to add something because I see people subscribing and that's the main purpose of this expedition is to add some cool pictures so and I think I have a couple so I can I'm gonna post photos of these nice little birds oh by the way one thing I I learned about the birds is usually like I'm no you know botanist quite often I don't know what they're called but one thing I found is that morning that's rude you know not replying so one thing I found is that the the more beautiful the song is the prettier the prettier is the bird like really like an ugly bird you know like this like that crow all black and it cannot even sing but those little birds over there they're very pretty and they sing extremely like their songs are super attractive you know and so basically when you're walking on the trail and you hear a nice bird song like a very pretty notes you know then I know that that's I have to take a picture of that bird because it probably looks cool but speaking about uh, being semi-professional so yeah just those websites and occasionally well like a few times a year I do get lucky and somebody buys my picture which makes me you know super proud of some of my images and that's why I say I'm a semi-professional photographer because people pay me for my photos on a highly irregular basis but still you know it's pretty cool because I think I did achieve a decent level I'm not a professional but I have good equipment I've been doing this off and on since I was what like 15 14 years old I think it was my birthday when we lived when I lived in Russia and my mother gave me for my birthday this fully manual Russian camera called FED Fed I think it was Fed 3 it was 35 millimeter like full frame but fully manual like you had to move the frame manually there was like a that water like a lever you had to measure exposi uh, exposure manually you had to set everything manually there was no battery because everything was manual and it, of course it used it used the 35 millimeter film which was a pain in the butt to work with because you had to develop it you had to, then you had to have a uh, equipment to print photos from it I'm telling you I still remember the annoying knocks on the door of the bathroom where I set up my where I would set up my photo lab to to develop all these and print them and we had only one bathroom <laughs> Seryoshka, не могу держаться Sergey, I cannot stand it anymore basically somebody have to go to the bathroom all right so I said okay hold on one second so I cover everything because of course there was no light I just had a red red light there otherwise you would ruin all the photos but it was such a pain in the butt man and then because I I was always very bad at figuring out the exposure in those early years and most pictures would be black like underexposed you know and my father the expert my late father 
would say, look at the picture, scratch his chin, and he would say in Russian, я не знаю, Сережка, вот чего-то не хватает. Вот не знаю чего, но чего-то не хватает. I'm no expert, but something is missing here. I don't know what, but something is missing. But so something is missing, but he did not know what it was. <laughs> I'm still laughing remembering this. But yeah, they were dark. Uh, and of course, back in those days, there was no software, right? Like now, I take a picture. I look on the back and it's all digital, right? And actually I'm super, you know, excited about this that I witnessed in my lifetime such a huge development. So I started with a 35 millimeter, oh, and it was black and white, of course. Black and white, fully manual. Now I have this fully automatic. If I want, if I switch to full auto, actually, wait a second. I don't think, well, this one has a program mode, which is pretty much auto. And it's all digital, and as soon as I take a picture, I can do a preview. If it's too dark, I know how to adjust the exposure, make it lighter. And when I upload it to the computer, even though I don't have stuff like Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop, but I, even a basic uh, photo that I have on my Mac, I can click one button, it's called auto, what is it called, basically it's like auto correction. And if it's a picture is a bit too dark, you click that button, boom, it makes it brighter. And of course you can crop right in the computer, like this technology nowadays, man, it's so nice. This is so easy now and way way cheaper well actually cameras are much more expensive than back then but yeah so no big animals no oh, i know why there's a railroad line in there so it probably can get pretty noisy over here so yeah that's what you get you walk 1.6 clicks and you see two and a half birds and none of them even say hello yeah look at this my boots are wet the good thing it occurred to me to to wear them they're supposed to be waterproof but they're old i think they're still letting the water in like i don't know why i don't see any deer like this will be a perfect it's a good time of day early in the morning lots of grass yeah, see so the sun is over there so ideally i want to see the animal here then i can get the light in the eyes and then it looks very sharp because that's for good photography that's what you want you want very sharp eyes so you always focus on the eyes and if you can remember one thing from this little presentation if you're interested in photography you always pay attention to the background and that's another reason why i wasn't too upset about that fox that i saw this morning because the background was construction materials lying around. Basically there was some construction guys were probably on the previous days were working on some dirt in there. There's like timber lying around, you know. It's all very busy background that has nothing to do with nature. And so a picture like that would not be good. So here somewhere, you know, ideally like let's say I see a deer you know standing there by itself so that would be perfect like with nothing around and another thing that I always try to avoid is uh, cables and wires you know like at first I would see a beautiful like landscape mountains in the distance you know and I'm like, cool, I'm gonna take this picture. 
because let's say there's a great I'm looking at the distance at maybe at an elevation there's a mountain the lake I take a picture I look at it on the computer and there's some stupid phone cables and electric cables clearly visible you know <laughs> what kind of a landscape is that right Best spray stool, please. Oh, yeah. No, but seriously, I just took it just in case. Maybe there's some kind of coyote or something, or a wolf, you know. Because I don't think this will work with them unless it's some crazy wolf that just eats people for a living. Usually they just run away. But just because this is my only protection, except I can hit somebody with a camera, but then of course I have to buy a new camera. A bass spray gives you five seconds of that satisfaction. And that's it, no more spray. That's how long it lasts, I think. They told me like the five seconds or close to that. <laughs> So basically it's one shot type of a deal. If you cannot get over if you cannot get rid of the bear in five seconds, your history. So yeah, even this one is the ground is rising a little bit. Yeah, I got, what, three pictures? Two of them are more or less decent. So, like, all these birds, they're like this size. And they're 10 meters away, 300 feet. So, I'm not gonna even bother. Okay, what is that one? Oh, that's a crow. This camera has an excellent tracking for birds in flight. So the plans for today are to finish my uh, books I started yesterday sorted all my receipts and wrote down numbers on my on the big yellow envelope now I just have to go my banking website and see what I charge to my credit cards because sometimes I don't have receipts like like a permit, for example, right? When I buy a permit with a credit card, they send you a receipt, but it's on the computer in an electronic form. And so for me, it's easy. I go into my credit card transaction list and I look for like big amounts, like, you know, like over 100 or 200 bucks. And I know that's something like a permit or a toll for the truck or tire repair, you name it. <sighs> yeah, this should be enough for the day. I did my part, one mile, 1.6 kilometers. <sighs> I 
There was a small bird that just flew over and landed there. I thought maybe I'd, I'll take a little picture large, you know, with a large bird in the frame, but as soon as I made one step, it disappeared. I'm really glad that I found this park. <laughs> this looks like an eye. <sighs> yeah, I saw this like I came on a paved road but there's a shortcut where you can go on a dirt road so I think I'll go on the dirt road because there can be uh, animals in the area I think that's the road over there because you can see the cables and wires and usually they put them near the road so I think now we're going south towards my truck. Oh yeah, that's where I was walking past that fence over there. Well, this one is free. You know, unlike many parks in Alberta, for example. Like, usually there's nobody in the at the booth and the entrance is open, but you know, it makes you feel bad if you don't pay because there's a box in there and it says ten dollars per vehicle and so you're supposed to drop in cash or or a check and i never have cash on me so it's quite annoying to find out that they want the payment so i always try to do yeah, research before before I go to see if they want payment or not. But these ones, like here in Saskatchewan, it's free. Yeah, see some people stay here as a camping site. You see over there? Pets must be leashed. No fires. Littering is an offense. No motor vehicles on the premises over there. Horses allowed but not permitted on designated ski trails all year once ski trails are groomed hiking is restricted to the designated hiking trail uh -huh, it says trailhead box donations or membership in the regina ski club supports trail maintenance but it's not obligatory so I only saw two and a half birds and I'm not paying well, give me some wolves maybe a bear you know even like an alligator or something I would pay but 
All right, that's it, boys and girls. I'm going to post these uh, few pictures I took at the end of this blockbuster. And then if I see something on the way to the truck stop, I'll do that as well. Maybe I'll see. I was hoping for, for a deer, but so far, no luck.